Let's continue with the story of uh, the geometry that's leading up to special relativity. I want to talk about projections, which is the big tool um, that we're going to use for a lot of things. And it's equally applicable in the Euclidean case, the ordinary dot product that leads to Euclidean geometry, and the weird dot product, the minus sign, that leads to Minkowski geometry and special relativity. So here's the, uh, here's the geometric situation. We've got a vector w and a vector v. And we want to project v orthogonally onto w, which means that we're going to draw this. We're going to have a right triangle. And we want to find this vector p, that's this leg of the right triangle. It's the shadow of v onto the direction of w. And then we'll call this q for what's left over. Um, and that's the orthogonal part. Both of them are useful, although p is maybe a little more fundamental, and we're going to use it more. One thing that's important is that the role of w here is just to define this line that we're projecting v onto. And uh, so it's just the line that's important. In particular, we should get formulas so that if we double w or triple it or scale it in any way, it shouldn't affect the, the final answer for, for example, the vector p or q or the length of p or the length of q. So. Uh, notice this is, uh, I've, I've implicitly drawn kind of a Euclidean picture here, but the schematic, uh, it really applies to Minkowski geometry as well. And we're going to do this pretty much all at once. Uh, once we do the projections, then we'll move on to some consequences that are definitely different in uh, the Euclidean and the Minkowski case. OK, so let's look at this picture and sort of turn it into algebra. Because the dot product is essentially an algebraic gadget or its usefulness is because algebra is much easier to mani manipulate in some ways than geometry. OK, so one thing is simply that I'm decomposing v into the sum of two vectors. This triangle just means that v is the sum of p and q. OK, what else was supposed to be special? It was supposed to be that p was some mystery multiple of w. The whole point is that p ends up in this direction of w. And this is, um, so that's crucial. And then the other thing is the right, the right angle here, the fact that q is supposed to be orthogonal to w. And so I'll write that. I guess I go back and forth sometimes between using the dot product notation and the, wed the, the angle bracket notation. Let's use the dot product notation. Um, well, no, actually, I think to link up with the Minkowski stuff, I'll use the angle bracket notation. Change my mind again. OK, so um, I claim that we can find these three equations to find the mystery a. So that's something we don't know, is exactly how much of a multiple of w we need to do use to create the magic p. But I believe I think we can use this, all this, to get a, and then we can get everything else out of that. OK. Um, first of all, though, I want to pull out one really, really important thing. Since this is a right triangle, it's going to be very important that when I take v, the inner product of v with v, this is basically a little review of something we saw before. When I FOIL this out, the q and p scalar products, or dot products, whichever case we're in, those are going to be 0 by, uh, by this. Why is that? Well, it's because p is a multiple of w. p and q are definitely orthogonal, just like q and w are. I put w in here because it's part of the given data, and it's a little bit simpler to put it in there. But here, all we get is the non-cross terms. And so in the Euclidean case, that just says the magnitude squared of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the sum of the squares of the other sides. So it's just Pythagoras. It really is just Pythagoras. In the Minkowski case, we want to be a, a little more careful about that. These aren't just magnitude squareds. So they're the quadratic form. So it's a little bit more careful to write it this way. Oh, and I'm using q for doing two different things. Well, with q with an arrow over it is the vector, and then q is the quadratic form. Funny, I didn't realize that until now. OK. Um, so that's going to be important, uh, very, very important for a use of the, what our first use we're going to have of this guy. OK. But it just comes from Pythagoras for that right triangle. And that's true in both setups. OK, so actually, let me erase that right away, because I want to do the algebra here. OK, so we're going to um, substitute this equation into here and then substitute the result into here. We're sort of starting with the simplest operation, scalar multiplication. 
moving to the equation that has the next simplest, which is scalar, which is vector addition, and then to the next, uh, the least simple, although still not super complicated, the scalar product. Okay, so what we get is that Q is V minus AW, just combining these equations and solving for Q because that's what appears here. And so then we get that the scalar product of W with V minus AW is zero. Oh, hey, okay, I can uh, use bilin bilinearity there. And so that says that the scalar product of W with V minus A times the scalar product of W with W is zero. And I can solve for A, because that's, that's the only unknown in here, really. Or that's the crucial unknown. Um, and then we're going to get P and Q out of that. And so A is going to be the scalar product. I'm going to say VW. It's symmetric. And that just feels better, because it's in alphabetical order. OK, and that's the, key, that's the big break, is getting a formula for A. One thing to notice right away here is that uh, this fails if w is a null vector. Now, the only way that can fail in Euclidean geometry is if w is actually 0. And if you think, if the w is the 0 vector, and then I say project v onto the line defined by w, that doesn't make any sense. A 0 vector doesn't define a, a direction or a line. But in uh, Minkowski geometry, if w is a null vector, that defines a, a line but you can't project onto it because null vectors are so funky with regards to orthogonality and, and the geometry. So this is a very important fact, is you can't project onto a null vector in the Minkowski world. We're not going to try, as it turns out, but it's definitely important to, to recognize. OK, so now uh, I can erase this stuff. All I need to do is save the formula for A and just pull the consequences of that out. So the projected vector is going to be just this big thing. Now, this looks complicated, but it's just a scalar. This is just a number. And then times w. OK. So that's important to know. OK. Um, Q, if we need a formula for that, well, I don't know if we will. That's just, uh, remember, it's v minus p. And I'm just going to put everything over a common denominator of w, w. So it's going to be the scalar product of w with w times v all over w with w minus, and then the scalar product of v with w times w. OK, so that's just v, put it into a common denominator, and that's w. So it's a common, an interesting combination of v and w and, the, and various of the um, scalar products. Um, and then the last one that we're going to need is sometimes we only care about the magnitude. How much does v go in the direction of p? And that's going to be really crucial. The magnitude of p, so that's just the magnitude of this guy. Now this is a scalar, and even in the Minkowski case we have this very basic fact that the magnitude of a scalar times a vector you just get the absolute value of this number coming out. And so it's going to be the absolute value. Actually, let me put absolute values top and bottom. And then times the magnitude of w. And let's think about that. The scalar product of w with w, remember that can be negative. But we're intentionally just taking the absolute value of it. With magnitudes, we intentionally forget the sign information. And often, what we're going to see in the Minkowski case when we use this in, in, in the next video, or maybe the one after that, um, is that we often have to use magnitudes, but also reinsert the sign information by hand. But even if this is negative, we're just taking the absolute value. So that's just positive. This is just the squared magnitude of w. So this is just the absolute value of the scalar product divided by magnitude of w squared and then times magnitude of w, OK, that just cancels down. And so we've just got the absolute value of the scalar product divided by the magnitude. This gets pretty close to isolating the scalar product, which is a really nice thing. This is something, essentially, I do this in a little low tech, more low-tech fashion in other videos, um, just about the basics of, this, of the, um, the dot product. It says that one way to get information about how to think about the dot product or scalar product of two vectors. So just think dot product, Euclidean dot product here. 
Um, let's suppose I just want to know about the size of it. This is a really good interpretation. It has something to do with the size of V and the size of W and, and the angle between them and how they interact. Okay. But uh, another way to think about it is it's really, it has to do with the size of W and the size of the projected version of V, because that incorporates both the size of V and the angle between them. It's basically magnitude of V cosine theta in the, in the Euclidean case. In either case, it's equal to, um, to this product. That's going to be really key for us, um, that it's very nice to see this as the size of the scalar product of two vectors is the size of one vector times the size of the projection of the other. And this works in both settings. Everything I've done works in both settings as long as w is not a null vector. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to save for another video the two big consequences in Euclidean geometry of these formulas. And then for the one after that, we'll do the consequences in Minkowski because that's where it gets different.